here seen my old friend Abraham Can you tell me where he's gone He freed a lot of people But it seems the good they die young You know, I just looked around and he's gone Anybody here seen my old friend John? Can you tell me where he's gone? Oh, he freed a lot of people, but it seems the good they die young. I just looked around and he's gone. Tell me, tell me where he's gone. Oh, he freed a lot of people, but it seems the good they die young. And I just looked around and he's gone. Uh, We human beings are natural procrastinators. Like my 12-year-old who waits until the last minute has come and gone to do the things on his list, take out the trash, do his homework, take a shower for God's sake. I had to nip my own procrastination in the bud and now every time an email comes in, if I haven't answered it within three seconds, all hope is lost as the weight of the work to be done piles up like unpaid debt. Speaking of unpaid debt, don't we owe the world better than this? Shouldn't we be paving solar panels onto our skin? Shouldn't all the food be in all the mouths? Shouldn't every body have four walls surrounding it and a layer of clothing protecting it from the elements. These are the overdue essentials. Now should have been already. If these goals were library books, we would owe so much in late fees. So when tomorrow seems like a good idea, as stomachs rumble, as the winter air makes flesh uncomfortable, as people still shout for inequity years after a saint was murdered for crying against it. It's time to walk out the door with your signs and sweat. It's time to dust off your checkbooks. I realize so few people write checks anymore, so if you're more comfortable with Venmo, that's fine. The point is, 
do it now. Don't question it. The alarm has already gone off. The world is waiting for you. Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Juma Smith Pollard and glad to be a part of this project with you all. So I've been challenged to answer the question, what are you doing for others? As a pastor, I see my role for others is to continue to be a positive spiritual influence, to give interpretation to the times, to give some prophetic voice, but also to offer at every opportunity words of healing and comfort. There's so much pain and so much agony that people need hope. And whether we agree or disagree on politics and agenda and civic engagement issues, there is a lot of healing that has to take place right now. We have a lot of big battles in front of us. And now is not the time for leaders to go and put stick their heads in the ground. Leaders have to stand up at an hour like this. Whether we want to or not, whether we agree or disagree, all leaders, all hands on deck to stand up and be a voice and to be present in the engagement issues, whether that's homelessness or feeding programs or outreach or even having conversations over and over again with our local and national politicians. This is an hour and a time. And I do believe that my efforts and efforts of so many of you collectively can bring about transformation for our local space here in Los Angeles, but also for our national space. And so what I'm doing for others right now is really leaning into the roles that I have been given, which is that of pastor and community leader, and then doing my best every day to just to be kind and love people. <laughs> people need kindness and love. We are all dealing with suspended grief. And even as I utter these words, I'm holding back tears because a very dear friend of mine just died. COVID-19 and so love and kindness is the best thing that we can do for each other the best thing we can do for our neighbor thank you God bless Moses bringing us tablets of ten Love for a woman and man I don't need all of humanity All I need is you, 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 you You make me feel the world is not a basket case When through my tears I see your smiling face A little love and joy, some love and passion And I'll see the world in optimistic fashion Though it seems that we are losing I can't connect to what the world is choosing I'd resurrect a simple way of love And mine is push and shove and The angels sing A little love, bring it in A little love and just a little love And how elements of me Put our weapons down, erase the fear, the frown, and let the sun shine in. He, like, fought for black rights even though he was threatened and he was, uh, said like he couldn't do it or whatever, but he actually could, and he showed all of those people that he could. Dr. King had a transformative impact on my own life. When I was young and a college student and was becoming deeply involved in the struggle for free immigration of Jews from the Soviet Union, our movement patterned its strategy on King's commitment to nonviolent protest and legislative leverage to achieve social change. I do believe that ultimately kindness can overcome hate. That does not mean we should be subservient or remain quiet whenever we encounter injustice. The right words, the right actions that motivate change and eliminate ignorance and foster justice, equity, inclusiveness and peace. So I think him like trying his hardest and just thinking about other people over himself is another thing that he really did. 
Our DNA can be directly traced back to him and the civil rights movement that he led. As a way of honoring the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we can open a window on the complex relationship between LA's black and Jewish communities. King's belief in tolerance and the Torah's insistence of loving the stranger leads us to ask, have the black and Jewish communities found a way to embrace? At first, the embrace was uncomfortable. Minstrel shows were popular with Angelinos up until the earliest decades of the 20th century. With the rise of fascism in the 1930s, Jews and blacks came together to protect their rights. The Los Angeles Sentinel, a black-owned LA newspaper, declared, both American Negroes and Jews have long since demonstrated their claims and right to American citizenship, and attempts to discriminate against either ought to be frowned upon. In 1935, the two communities began to see the value of embracing the same politician. As an unexpected voting bloc, they were the decisive votes in electing County Supervisor Frank L. Shaw as LA's mayor. They would come together again in 1973, this time as a coalition, to elect Councilman Tom Bradley as mayor. Drawing blacks and Jews together was the fight against restrictive housing covenants, which prevented property owners in certain areas from selling homes to blacks or Jews. In 1947, LA Superior Court Justice Stanley Mosk, a Jewish supporter of civil rights and a future California Supreme Court Justice, ruled that the covenants were not enforceable. With the establishment of the State of Israel in May 1948, the Sentinel added their support, saying that helping a courageous people maintain their independence outweighed the potential gain of securing Arab oil in return for sabotaging the legitimate desire of the Jews for a homeland. In the early 1940s, music helped to break down the city's color barrier. Billy Berg, a Jewish owner of a nightclub on Vine, introduced such black stars as Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker to an integrated audience. At Billy Berg's, the stage was integrated too, at first. Any potential embrace was pulled apart by the Watts riots in August 1965. Over 200 businesses were looted and destroyed, including many that were Jewish owned. Though some Jewish owners were resented for not living in the area, and taking resources out of the community. In their defense, they had hired black employees, supplied goods and services in an area which had few, and had allowed shoppers to buy on credit. In the 1970s, forced busing came between the two groups. The first year, 25,000 white students, many of them Jewish, left the system. Though Bobby Fiedler formed an organization called Bus Stop in 1976, LAUSD board member Jackie Goldberg took a stance in support of busing. But in 1965, before Watts and busing, Dr. Martin Luther King gave a speech of hope at Temple Israel of Hollywood during Shabbat services. Said King, And tonight I would like to suggest in some of the symbolic mountains that we have occupied long enough and that we must leave if we are to move on to the promised land of justice, peace, and brotherhood. It is in that land of promise where a true embrace is possible that we celebrate King today. Happy Martin Luther King's Day. Hi, I'm Nita Whitaker and I'm here with my daughters, Lisey and Sky. We are so happy to join the celebration of a great man, a great American. We send this prayer to all of you. I pray you'll be our eyes and watch us where we go. Let this be 
Um, from your perspective, why do we celebrate Martin Luther King Day? Why do we celebrate his life? And uh, why is this a life that we need to remember? Um, he stood up against injustice and he stood up against um, racial discrimination. And I think so it's, it's important for us to remember um, the sacrifices that he made, but ultimately he sacrificed his life um, for the good of this world. And, and he did it, he tried his best to do it with, with love and without violence. Um, but God blessed him to have a lot of men and women, um, including uh, Rabbi Heschel, who, who stood by him. Uh, even today, when we look at the pandemic, we look at the racial injustice, um, you get this how men and women from different ethnicities, different racial backgrounds coming together to fight to bring awareness to the fact that there is injustice, there is systemic racism. It's, just, it's amazing to see how the Jewish community and, and the African-American community um, continue, you know, through through their own tension, own theological differences, just to come to, to come together in community to fight these battles. Now you gave just a sermon that I can't get out of my head, and it's called, Who's Your Neighbor? When you look at who is your neighbor, when you see someone hurting, you have to see past their skin color, you have to see past any difference you have. If you see someone hurting, what are you willing to do to help them? And when you look at what happened with George Floyd, who is your neighbor? Are you, are you going to be the person who stands by and watches injustice? Are you going to be the person who stands by and watches someone suffer? Or are you going to be the person who says, you know what, regardless of the differences that we have, you know, um, I have to do something. In the book of uh, Deuteronomy, in Hebrew it said, Exedet Yerdof, justice, justice, you shall pursue. I think uh, it's important as we can't physically knock on our neighbor's door to continue that, that bridge as well. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Beautiful. Which means when you see injustice, if you don't handle it, don't deal with it, don't confront it, then it has an opportunity for us to allow injustice to take place anywhere and everywhere. And so um, when I, hearing his speech, um, hearing his mindset, I think we have to understand the importance it takes. It, it's not easy, you know, and I think that's the true sign of a neighbor when it costs you something. It's easy to help someone when it's when you're going to get publicity and people love it and it's just a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. When it costs you something, that's when you find out what true friendship is. That's when you find out what a real neighbor is. Honestly, that's when you really find out what you're made of. The blessing that we say every single day before, it's called Ahavarabah, which means a lot of love. You cannot 
say that declaration of faith unless you have love for God, love for yourself, and of course, then love for the other as well. I sing this now and I think about my feelings inside when I sang it many years ago at the March on Washington with Noel Paul Stuckey and Mary Allen Travers. We were finally breaking through to address the fact that the inequality between blacks and whites was such that the emperor had no clothes and we were saying it together. There wasn't the categorical hatred of those people who were on the other side. But there's one other difference, and this is a very good sign. When we had the March on Washington, and when we had, following that, the anti-war movement, we did not have the societal enfranchisement of women, strong women women who now have shown up to lead the way. The other thing is that we didn't have the voices of kids. 
pleading for humanity, for change and for equity. Now we do. The times are more challenging and the wages of being unsuccessful are more severe. But we have more partners in this effort. Knowing that, the most important thing that we have to do is to fill the void, the black hole of empathy. Where has all the empathy gone? And speaking about empathy and compassion, when I sing Blowing in the Wind, that's what I've come to believe. That the answer, my friend, it's not very Bob Dylan, but it's the answer, my friend, is empathy and compassion. The answer is blowing in the wind. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us that darkness can't drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And that hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The time is always ripe to do right. Now is the time to make real the promise of democracy. As we continue the fight for justice, we must always remember the people who paved the path for us, people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who dedicated his life to the cause of a more perfect union. We need to find his spirit of service and his commitment to pressing on in reforms in a manner that would make us all proud as Americans. As children of Holocaust survivors, it's so important for us that everybody be treated with respect and dignity and that everybody's lives are valued equally. Martin Luther King peleó por mí y por todos nosotros para poder tomar nuestro puesto en esta vida y respetarnos y querernos compartir con uno al otro todos nuestros talentos, nuestras ideas y nuestra voz. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Let us be that man, that woman, that person that stands for peace, love, and justice. Dr. King was a holy messenger, a righteous envoy who carried with him a timeless truth that we all are equal, all worthy in the eyes of God. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. So let us all be strong, be united, be vigilant, be giving, be purposeful, and in so doing, we can honor Dr. King and bring to life his vision for a better world. Kindness, peace, fairness, and everything that we deserve. The thing is, Dr. King, people are asking why we celebrate you. Why honor a man who stood for freedom in a land consumed by hate? You chose to turn the other cheek and speak of dreams this land might bring. You deserve a day for MLK, for Martin Luther King. No billy clubs or vicious dogs could slow your quest for changes, and you would never cease to march for peace, oblivious to dangers. We heard you preach non-violence to teach that love's the only thing. Why would anybody hesitate to celebrate you, Martin Luther King? You couldn't save Mike Brown or Freddie Gray in Baltimore, nor prevent the jackboots crashing through Breonna Taylor's door. Corey Jones, Laquan McDonald, Trayvon Skittles in his lifeless hand. We hope and pray somehow George Floyd is with you where you stand. You remind us that our story's not a pretty one to tell. We'd rather hear of pioneers and Paul Revere and of the Liberty Bell. You bring to mind three quarters of a million who died to test the bonds of slavery. We think about the Jews and whites who died for rights. The Freedom Riders' bravery. To break a people, you must plunder their humanity. Deny them education and deny them liberty. Make laws to segregate, incarcerate, and block their votes. Erase the tales where millions sailed and died in transit on those boats. 
You see, the thing is, Dr. King, they're asking what you meant to us. It should be evident to all. It's evident to us. You gave your life in hope that we might all hear freedom ring. There should be more than just one day for us to say, thank you, Martin Luther King. My father was a rabbi in Charleston, South Carolina in the 1950s. He remembered segregated bathrooms and signs in stores that said, no dogs, Jews, or Negroes. He used to tell us about his memories. The other thing my father would tell us about was the Torah. The story of Joseph, who is a young man told his dreams to his brothers and they hated him for it. And they put him in a pit and he ended up in a jail in Egypt. And in prison, he interpreted the cupbearer and the baker's dream and then Pharaoh's dream and became the viceroy of Egypt. And the rabbis ask, what's the difference between the first set of dreams that ended him in prison and the second that made him a success? And their answer is that Joseph fell when he could only hear his own dreams, but he rose when he could hear the dreams of others. Dr. King shared his dream with all of us so that we could hear it and we could live it. A dream of a country that not only had freedom but equality and justice. A dream where people were judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. A dream which he had the courage to write about from the Birmingham jail when the country would be flooded by the radiant star of love and brotherhood. That star still shines, that dream still beckons. We are torn apart at this moment by all sorts of divisions, racial, religious, cultural, political, but we still have the dream. And today we celebrate the man who gave it its most beautiful articulation for all of us the man who let us understand that listening to each other's dreams is the way to rise. God bless his precious soul. May America and all of us be worthy to realize the beauty, the power, the passion, the love in that dream. You are broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round and you can't find a fighter but I see it in you so we're gonna walk it out move mountains we're gonna walk it out and And our eyes, oh, our eyes like the day Our eyes up, our eyes unafraid Our eyes up, and I'll do it a thousand times again For you, you, The silence isn't quiet And it feels like it's getting harder to breathe And I know you feel like tired But I promise we'll take the world to its feet Move mountains 
bring it to his feet and oh mountain and eyes of oh, eyes like the day I will rise up eyes unafraid of eyes out and I do it a thousand times again. That we have each other, ever that we have each other. Do it a thousand times again. We can Thank you.